Welcome to this QuickBooks 2021 tutorial for beginners, how to add inventory. Okay, so the problem here in QuickBooks and in a lot of people's QuickBooks files is they don't properly add inventory to their QuickBooks file. So what happens when you don't enter inventory into QuickBooks or you don't enter inventory correctly? Well, one, you risk overstating expenses. So your profits are gonna be lower. Two, you're gonna understate your assets. So your balance sheet is gonna be off. These two things combined can have a drastic impact on your financial statements and a drastic impact on your profitability and how you make decisions in your business. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna walk you through how to properly add inventory so that you get your financial statements correct. I'm gonna to get to that in just one second. First, I wanna ask you to please subscribe to my channel. Please help me boost this. This helps me uh, when I attract people, I attract subscribers. This helps me grow the channel and this helps me continue to provide free content. Also like the video, share it. If you can just forward this, share it, copy the link, send it to somebody you think it'll help, ask them to subscribe, that would be great. I surely would appreciate it. Okay, so let's get down to this. How to add inventory in QuickBooks. All right, so we're going to go through a few things here. And now there's a couple kind of behind the scenes items uh, that we're not going to get into specifically, but that do play a part in inventory within QuickBooks. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go to the list drop down menu. Okay, so inventory items in QuickBooks all center around this item list right here. Okay, so we're going to select item list. You can see in this sample company file, we've got a ton of items already set up. Okay, and you'll see here when you see type, you'll see inventory part, inventory assembly, non inventory, other charge, group, sales tax, etc. Okay, so uh, a basic tenant of QuickBooks is the item, and uh, it is what generally is going to populate uh, your invoices, your sales receipts, um, you know, your um, bills, all that kind of stuff that you enter into QuickBooks. All a lot of this is like a database, all right. And so we want to build this database of inventory within QuickBooks. So if you sell inventory, you definitely need to put in items. And I'm going to show you why that's important. So we're in this we're in this uh, item list here, and this is where we're going to add inventory. So what you can do, you can do one of two things: you can right click and you can click new, or you can go down to item and click new. Okay, either way is going to take you to the same spot. You're going to see this. This is the screen to enter a new item. So you can see here, we're going to pick inventory part, pretty self-explanatory. And we're going to enter the item name slash number. Okay. So let's say that this is, yeah, you know, I'll make something up here. Part one, two, three, four, and number one, two, three, four. Sub item of now we're not going to make this a sub item of anything but you can see here that you can make it a sub item so if you have a sort of a, a say a major category or a category that has a couple different options under it like cabinets cabinet pulls light pine uh, you can make this a sub item now this is going to be a main item so we're going to leave it as a main item manufacturer's part number if you have a part number for your from your manufacturer you can by by all means enter it here but you don't need to unit of measure now this is pretty important if you are selling things if you just buy things and you resell them you know that's uh you know it could be something big whatever it is you buy it you resell it you track one item at a time then you don't need this unit of measure now if you buy it in bulk let's say a box full of items and you sell individual items then you definitely want to do this unit of measure Again, you don't have to. It all depends on how you enter your inventory. Okay, but let's go through this. All right, so we'll say unit of measure. We're going to add new. All right, let me pull this over here to this screen. Select a unit of measure type. So in this case, and you can see here, we've got all these different options. We're going to say count because we're going to assume that we get a box of items and then we sell each one. So let's click next. Now, we get to this screen, it says when you create inventory items, the base unit of measure should be the smallest increment used to track them. Okay, and it's got an example here, but for this 
purpose, we're going to say each because we're assuming that we're buying a box. Next, we are going to uh, click the add field for each related unit you want to add. All right, so you can click box and abbreviation box, and we're going to say that there are 25 in a box. Purchase, we purchase them by the box and we sell them each. Now shipping, if selected, overrides the unit of measure on sales orders when printing pick lists. You don't need to add anything here. You can leave this blank. The important thing is, is if you buy it by the box and then you sell it each, you want to add both of these like this. We're going to click next and the set name, we're going to say uh, the count in each box. So we finish, then we say count in each box. So now the purchase information, description on purchase transactions, you can leave this blank. Uh, this is if you do purchase orders, it's going to automatically fill in the description. You can leave it blank and type it in on the face of the purchase order, or you can type whatever you want. It'll show up on the purchase order, but you can always change it. Okay, so if you enter something here, it's not set in stone. It's going to be okay. So we're going to say um, flush stuffed animals. In description of sales transaction, okay, it's going to say the same thing. You can, again, change this plush stuffed animals, and then maybe on an invoice you put the description. Let's say it's a, a rhinoceros plush stuffed animal, okay, or a horse or whatever it is. Now we come over here, we say the cost. The cost per each, which is going to be our box, we're going to say is $20. Now. If you put in $20 here, does it matter if it changes? Um, you know, let's say you do a purchase order, maybe the prices went up to $21, it doesn't matter. It will pre-populate this on a purchase order, but again, you can always change this on the face of the purchase order, because this number will change. Now, cost of goods sold account, this is going to be when you sell the item, because inventory, by its nature, when you purchase inventory to sell, it is an asset. It goes on the balance sheet. And then it goes, it comes out of the asset and goes to cost of goods sold, which is an expense when you sell it. Okay, you can only show the expense as you sell it. Very, very important to understand in accounting. So when we sell one of these items, we have to assign it to a cost of, good, a cost of goods sold account. You can see in this sample company file, they have um, just a cost of goods sold account. They don't have any sub accounts. Uh, but they also do have a job expenses, which is a separate cost of goods sold with sub accounts. In this case, we're going to call it cost of goods sold. And if you have a preferred vendor, you can add that here, but you don't need to. Now, sales price, we're going to say per each is going to be $18.99. Tax code, you can say it's either taxable or not taxable since this is a sale of a stuffed animal, usually retail type thing. We're going to say it's tax. And then you have to specify the income account. So this means when you sell it, what account is the income going to go to? So in this case, I'm going to pick one. Uh, we don't really have any good categories here because this is a construction company example, but we're going to say that this is materials income. So now we've got our cost of goods sold account. We've got our construction income account, and you see that the cost is higher than the sales price, and that's because we buy them $20 per box, but we sell them $18.99 each. Now, inventory information, quantities in each. So the asset account, again, like I explained a second ago, when you purchase this, it, it becomes an asset called inventory. So we're going to leave that there. That should default there. Reorder point. You can put in a reorder point, and this will just tell QuickBooks to remind you that you need to reorder this inventory. Maximum, you can leave that blank. On hand, right now we're going to say zero because we are just ordering this for the first time. And then the total value. And that's also zero because we have none on hand. As of 12-15-2023. Okay, that's the date in the sample company file. All right, so we have all of our information in here to add inventory to QuickBooks. So we're going to click OK. 
And now you can see we've got plush stuffed animals right there. This becomes important when you create an invoice and you're selling this, you would choose plush stuffed animals as the invoice. And you can change the price, you can do whatever you need to. When you do a purchase order, you're going to choose plush stuffed animals. And when you buy it, it's going to track what you purchase and put it into inventory, which is an asset. Then when you sell it, it takes it out of inventory, puts it to cost of goods sold. And then it'll remind you when to reorder. So that's basically how to add inventory to QuickBooks. It's not overly difficult. This sample company file has a lot of information in here. You're probably starting pretty much from scratch. And so you're going to have to add all of your inventory items. And that can be a little bit daunting if you have a lot of inventory. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below. Also, please, please subscribe to my channel, I'm trying to grow that subscriber base because that allows me to continue to do these tutorials and bring you this training. If this video was helpful, please like the video. Also, please click the little bell. The little bell uh, will give you a notification every time that I do publish a new video and also share this with your friends. I'd love to have you share this information, help other people out, other business owners, so they can have the right financial statements as well.